Thank you, Mr. President. To you, members of council, Madam Clerk, to uh, all the members of my cabinet and staff, the president, and to the public. Uh, good afternoon. First, uh, I wish to extend my thanks and appreciation to City Council for the opportunity to deliver the annual State of the City Address. Before beginning, I would like to begin by remembering our former business administrator, Virginia Gilliam Mose, who passed away on January 1st. Virginia was a remarkable woman who achieved much success. She was a good friend to the city of Atlantic City and will never be forgotten. Moving forward, as we know, this is a very challenging time for the city of Atlantic City. The economy is bad, horrible. Atlantic City's casino revenue dropped by 13.2% in the year 2009. Increased competition from other gaming jurisdictions continue to hurt Atlantic City's bottom line. We're not doing well. However, as the old saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And that's just what we're doing. I must say that I, for one, am optimistic about our future. <coughs> I believe we all know and understand that cooperation and commitment from all segments of the community is necessary in order for Atlantic City to move forward. Atlantic City has been through a lot. And if we are to learn from the past, we must embrace the future and seize the opportunity to make Atlantic City a better place to live, work, and visit. Each of us has a very important role, and by working together, we will achieve our goals. As it relates to the budget, the administration's proposed 2010 budget is still a work in progress. However, the preliminary budget of 2010 is approximately $40 million over the 2009 budget. The increased costs are a result of the following. $10 million in property tax credits for Ace Gaming, Trump, and resorts that we, re that we won't receive this year. $6 million in other tax appeals that we know are coming. $4 million in union negotiated raises. $9.5 million in both deferred and current pension contributions. $3 million for terminal leave. You'll remember that once upon a time, we had a designated account for terminal leave. That account has been totally depleted, and we must now budget for this item. $3 million increase in workers' compensation and other liability insurances. $4.5 million for an estimated 18% increase in health benefits. With respect to the latter, I hasten to remind you that this number would have been millions more if we hadn't switched to the state's health benefits plan. Again, I want to thank city employees and all of the collective bargaining units for working cooperatively with the administration and council to realize these savings. Last year, we were able to balance the budget without a negative impact on the city, on city employees. However, as you can see from the large deficit that we're facing this year, layoffs, demotions, and furloughs must happen. When I submit my budget to council, it will reflect A, demotions in the upper ranks of the police department, B, temporary and periodic firehouse closings, C, a two-week shortened beach season, D, furlough days as a result of municipal buildings closing on selected days, and E, layoffs of approximately 10 employees who earn high salaries as we eliminate those positions. On a positive note, I recently convened the Atlantic City Strategic Planning Committee to address the important issues facing the city. Twelve areas were identified. They include cleanliness, coordinated advertising and promotional efforts, crime prevention, customer courtesy, demolition of derelict properties, employment opportunity, special events, intergovernmental agency cooperation, non-gaming attractions, property taxes, regulatory relaxation, and traffic synchronization. The response to this committee has been overwhelming. We have assembled a large group of talented individuals that are in place and they have been working diligently. 
And as it is very important to emphasize, for the first time in Atlantic City's history, we have a cooperative effort to identify and address significant problems and plan for the future. We have been successful in starting the necessary dialogue and opening lines of communication with major stakeholders. The Atlantic City of the future will be a direct result of our current planning efforts. <coughs> and I emphasize we because we all have an important stake in Atlantic City. The Strategic Planning Committee members have formed subcommittees and continue to meet on a regular basis. They recently submitted their action plans, and soon we will all be impressed with their findings and recommendations. While we move forward to plan for the future, we must continue to properly manage the present. This includes fiscal responsibility, cutting public spending in general, as well as money the city spends on legal fees, which is a major expense. When I returned to office in November 2008, the solicitor's office maintained at least 13 contracts with different law firms for general litigation matters. Those contracts provided exposure for up to $615,000. Additionally, the previous solicitor sent out cases to at least 15 different law firms that were not under contract. The fees associated with these contracts were in excess of $1 million. My administration has streamlined the solicitor's office and taken the necessary steps to eliminate the improper practice of allowing attorneys to provide services without a contract, whereby protecting the city's financial interest. <coughs> also this year, the solicitor's office generated a $300,000 settlement for the city. When has city council ever heard of the city actually receiving a favorable settlement? Additionally, we secured at least eight victories at the summary judgment level, saving the city hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees and avoiding potential exposure. Again, let me pause at this time to first say thank you to former city solicitor Rob Tarver for his outstanding service rendered to my administration on behalf of our citizens. Rob is an extremely talented individual who, while no longer a city employee, will no doubt work at some point on behalf of the city in the future. Secondly, let me take this opportunity to publicly announce for the first time that I have offered the full-time solicitor's position to one of your own, G. Bruce Ward. In 2009, we formed the Alternative Energy Task Force and entered into a one-year agreement with the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey to work on energy conservation projects, assess grant opportunities, and submit and assist in submitting applications for funding. We also received a $219,000 grant from the federal government to assist us to go green. Future projects include the installation of solar panels on city-owned buildings, high-tech trash receptacles, state-of-the-art solar parking meters, and retrofitting the lighting in City Hall and on city streets. We plan to save 20% annually on our energy costs when, when the Green Initiative takes effect. Also, as most of you know, Fisherman's Energy LLC plans to construct windmills 2.8 miles out to sea. When complete, this $130 million project will ensure a source of clean energy for Atlantic City's future and create some jobs. I reaffirmed my commitment to help local merchants and small businesses by assigning a full-time director to Main Street Atlantic City. Local businessmen and women are the backbone of our community and, must, and we must encourage their success. There are many reasons why I'm so grateful to once again serve as mayor of the city of Atlantic City. As we all know, these are challenging times. Difficult decisions must and will be made. Your role as members of city council is vital to Atlantic City. I appreciate your willingness to address the needs of the community. I also welcome your input, <clears throat> ideas, and vision to solve our collective problems, lessen our taxpayers' burden, and improve the quality of life for our citizens. Furthermore, I sincerely look forward to working with each and every one of you, except one. <laughs> with your help, cooperation, and participation, we will truly make Atlantic City a shining example of community spirit and pride.